So, what better way to start this video with another Captain Underpants review? <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm back with another Captain Underpants book review. Today we're going to look at Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. Look at this. Sadly, this book doesn't have it. <laughs> Alright, anyways, let's begin. So, <clears throat> it all started with a invention convention with George and Harold wanting to enter. Then Mr. Crump finds them. He tries to tell them that they can't join after that massive stunt they pulled off, which would be known as the sticky chair situation. So, the... So what basically happened in the sticky chair situation was that all the teachers and sorry all the kids in the school got glued to their seats. It was pretty weird. Yeah, it was pretty weird. So <clears throat> they apparently said that they invented a new, uh, glue, but apparently they didn't invent the glue. They invented a new kind of glue. So, Mr. Crub reaches over, tries to grab, take away the mic away from them, but he, they're glued to their seats. Then, once one boy finds out that he's glued to his seat just to go to the bathroom, everyone uh, checks their seats, and it's revealed that everyone in the entire gymnasium is glued to their seats. So, what do they do? They charge at George and Harold, wanting to get revenge on them, even though that they're the massive pranksters of the school. I don't know why, but but then he may put a magnifying glass over the poster, and it says all fourth graders are allowed to attend this this year's invention convention except George Beard and Harold Hutchins. He says Mr. Krupp says that the two boys will be locked up in the detention room for good on that day. So, what do these boys do? Well. At, at night, they decide to pull the prank on, but they decide to pull their, the same prank, well not the same prank, but a identical prank, except it's on the machines. He, they mess up every single machine, or at least they try to, when they spot Melvin Sneedley, who's still working on his invention. What is he working on exactly? Well, it's called the Past Day 2000, which apparently brings stuff to life. He demonstrates it with uh, George and Harold by using a mouse. Not a computer mouse, but just a regular mouse. You know, the ones that uh, cats like to eat, I hear. Or they just like to chase them. That's all I know. We're not going to go there. Anyways. So, once Melvin leaves to wait for the next day, George and Harold start <clears throat> just messing up the machines. They put... Stuff in like eggs in the ping pong ball server or tennis ball server, I can't remember. And they even put uh, some package, a uh, package of pudding inside the volcano detector. So when it comes to pulling pranks, this has to be, these have to be the best pranks I've ever seen. It's like seriously. Then Mr. Crop. Sorry, it's the day of the invention convention, and everything goes wrong. First, there's this dog washing machine that sprays ink. Then, there's the ping pong server that shoots eggs out of it. Oh, sorry. And the volcano detector shoots a gigantic bag of pudding outside it. So everyone leaves the gymnasium all covered and everything. But Mr. Crub wonders how this happened. It couldn't have been George and Harold, he explains. Then Melvin said that it was them. So what did, does Mr. Crub do? He bashes down the detention room door and says, That's it. You boys are in permanent detention for the rest of the year or something like that. George and Harold try to lie to him, saying it wasn't us, we were in here all day, but then Melvin decides to say, to, uh, decides to come in and tells them that it was them, 
they said that they had a deal, which I think I forgot to mention that they had a deal. And what does Mr. Crump let make them do? Make them write stuff on a chalkboard. So what do they do? Simple life hacks. They grab this tube they I believe they got from home, stick one together, stick like poles and insert the chalk sticks in them. And every time they wrote one sentence, the pole wrote 12. So soon the chalkboards was full enough for it to be well filled. And they invented a new comic book because they had a spare, a lot of spare time called Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. Eh. Okay, so... I won't go too much into detail what the book is about. It's pretty much like as if George and Harold never ex- well, I, I won't say never existed, but you know what? You get the idea. But then they they decide to photocopy it, sneak out of the detention room, but they but they remember that Mr. Crump said that if they if he catches the two boys leaving the detention room that they're permanently suspended so they go over to the uh photocopier room and all the teachers and staff are in there they can't go past them otherwise they're in trouble deep trouble so they decide to go to the Pasty 2000 which was originally created by using an old photocopier wondering if they uh ma- still made copies they said that uh, Melvin just hid a mouse in there just to trick us. The, sorry, them. <laughs> but they were wrong. They turned it on, did everything like a normal photocopier, except it sh- shaked and it just did everything that wasn't the photocopier wasn't supposed to do. And then a small thing was heard. Then a t- talking toilet came out of it. Yum, yum, eat him up, it screamed. Then another, another one, and another one, and another one, until the gymnasium was filled with talking toilets. George and Harold had to make a run for it. So, and then once they got out the door, Mr. Crop spotted them. Ha! He, he exclaimed. Looks like you boys have exited the detention room. Yeah, I'm kind of bad at this. And it looks like that... They're about to be suspended, and once the message spread throughout the entire school, uh, Mr. Meaner, the gym teacher, uh, which, spoiler alert, is going to be the next, uh, the villain in Captain Underpants and the Sensational Saga, Sir Stings a lot, wants to throw a party in the gym, and apparently that's where the Pasty 2000 is, and uh, once he opens the door a few times, one time, he ate, opened it up, and a talking toilet came out. Uh, everyone uh, got surprised while Harold kind of uh, laughed a little. Then uh, another one came out, and another one, until all they all got eat. They all eaten the teachers, pretty much. Miss Ribble, Mr. Krupp, George, and Harold were all near each other. Miss Ribble was so afraid that she had to snap her fingers. And remember, when someone snaps their fingers around Mr. Krupp, he turns into you-know-who. So, what does Mr. Krupp do? He dashes out to the- his office, takes off his clothes, turn- uh, take- uh, takes off a curtain, ties it around his neck, and jumps out the window, collecting all the underwear throughout the neighbor's yards. So, what do George and Harold do? They follow him, uh, and they're being followed by a talking toilet. And, pretty much, Captain Underpants goes from door to door, collecting all the underwear from the clotheslines, while this, uh, little, uh, kid spots them. Mommy, I just saw a guy in his underwear seal all of our underwear. And now two boys are being chased by a talking toilet saying, yum, yum, eat them up. Where am I going to believe that? I'm not sure if that's exactly what they said, but... Anyways, this is where we're going to stop this review because I have to separate this into two parts due to how much...
space I have, it's limited, so, yeah. See you guys in the next video.